Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm going to be talking about the mistakes that players make that stop them from being able to reach their goals, be that winning more of their battles or dealing more damage in them. Today I'm going to be playing in the Tier 9 Soviet heavy tank. It is the IS-8, or at least it used to be called the IS-8 before Wargaming decided to change the name of it to the T-10. This all-round Tier 9 Soviet heavy tank is able to just do everything on the battlefield. So that means that I'm going to avoid making one of the first mistakes that I make. I see so many players make in their games and wonder why they have average 49% win ratio. And that's that they don't get into an early position that is safe, but yet still influential in the battle. But sometimes the most important locations can't be 100% safe. You still have to take some risks to be able to go into them. However, there's a reason why you see all of those players who are winning the vast majority of their games rushing into those positions, and that's because they can have an early impact on the battle to be able to deal damage to multiple enemy vehicles. We're getting rid of a Leopard prototype and a Pantera as we're having our team advance through this Dejanki map. All right, next we're going to see a mistake that looks like it would be a good idea, but it's actually a terrible idea. We have a 7772 on our team who's going to rush forwards to face hug the defender. Well, this would be a good idea if he was locked in one-on-one -on -one mortal combat, but he's really not. All he's doing right now is protecting the defender's hit points from the rest of his team and keeping us in a crossfire where we're going to get shot in the side through these buildings and slowing us down. Awful play there by the 7772. But I honestly think that the 7772 was probably doing it unknowingly. But that's the reason why players end up where they are, because it takes experience to be able to figure out whether something's going to be good or not to do in a situation. Sometimes you do want to face hug when you're in that one versus one, but not when you're holding back three or four vehicles from being able to vanquish the vehicle that you are locked in that what you think is one versus one combat. All right, so in this scenario in the T10, it's about taking defensive positions and trying to spread as many different locations that we can have against our opponents. So we've got the LT432 over there. I'm wanting to try and continue the push forwards, trying to get as much vision out for my team as possible. You'll see that we've already done 1,470 spotting, even though my view range in this tank is not the best, as I am playing on my Plays for Free account today, and I don't have all of those fancy things like recon, situational awareness, possibly don't even have brothers in arms and the like. But still, having about 430 meters view range of what I have on this vehicle will still be enough. So unfortunately, this LT-432 makes a valiant push there to spot the enemy tank destroyers, but I'm unable to connect a shell into the WZ. Communicating with your allies is something that's oh so important to do, and it's something I've been focusing a lot more recently, and I feel like it's been really helping out the impact of my teamwork and also maybe just helping to try and get some of the better players on my team to give that kind of like a, hey, let's do this together. Unfortunately for the LT-432, even though I said I would help them, uh, there's not very much help that I can give for an LT-432 against two, tier, uh, two Chinese tank destroyers. <coughs> Excuse me. So in this situation, it's all about asking our allies to fall back because there is a huge trap set on the enemy team. Do you think we really want to drive along this bush line with our vehicles with bad view range against Chinese tank destroyers and against Soviet double-barreled heavy tanks that are hold down in positions? No, we definitely don't want to do that. So I've asked the IS-22 on my team, the Liberté and the IS-3 all to fall back because I don't want them to die there for no reason. Or at least by asking them to fall back, maybe it will suggest to them that instead of kind of pushing onwards, just to hold their position and to give me enough time to go and secure the base. Now, this was quite an interesting scenario because falling back here, even if they weren't taking our base, in my opinion, would have been the right decision. However, it was a, a very easy decision for me to make because, of course, they were taking our base. So in this scenario, it was very interesting. You, you see that players you know, don't just go up into the same bush. When you've been spotted in a bush, to all intents and purposes, you should not expect that the enemy team are going to be that stupid that they're not going to aim for that bush. I'd locked my reticle on the bush by holding my R key, and then I was looking around, and I was even counting down during the stream a time that I was going to fire. Because after a tank is spotted, it's going to have 10 seconds before it's no longer spotted. 
And so, towards the end of it, you, you can probably count out about two, three, four seconds. And then it's quite likely that the light tank will have already driven back up into the bush. People get used to those timings. In this scenario, I'm actually loading high explosive anti-tank rounds because we've already dealt 3,700 damage. The T-10 doesn't have enough ammunition to be able to take enough rounds for when you get into your nice matchups and also for when you get into your bad matchups. And I could tell with the way that this game was going that with only four armor piercing rounds left, should I waste them by bouncing or maybe half the time bouncing off the VK and wasting those 1,000, 1,200 credits per shot? Or should I just pay the extra and pay the 4,400 credits to more or less guarantee the penetrations against the VK? In that scenario, seeing how I knew that I was going to need these armor piercing rounds later on in the battle, I kind of actually made credits by spending more credits early. Bizarre concept. It's one of the, the paradoxes of World of Tanks, right? The fact that you can actually end up losing more credits by bouncing standard rounds than if you were to just load the gold rounds and be able to go through your opponents in, in that scenario. Look, it's just the game mechanics, man. You're just going to have to have to deal with it right at this point. And that's why I, I don't shy away from calling them gold rounds and being very clear to to my audience and specifically people who are wanting to start to get into World of Tanks to know what to expect. However, still, through good use of your ammunition, you can end up, yeah, at least losing less credits, hopefully breaking even or, or more optimistically even making credits. So that penetration was actually a very unique one against the Conqueror there. That's entering his lower plate in a position where we can also shoot through to get the tracks behind. And we get to put our final round into the side of the Conqueror turret. So in that scenario, I knew that the Conqueror was undergunned through the amount of hit points that they had. They had 1,850 hit points, whereas a maxed out Conqueror is going to have 1,950 before they use, say, a durability module. But more importantly, I could also tell at the top of the screen that they'd shot me with the Carnarvon's gun that has 280 alpha damage. And so that suggested to me, or it didn't even suggest, it told me that I should try and trade one for one with the Conqueror rather than going into an all-in engagement because a Conqueror using the Carnarvon's gun actually has ridiculously high damage per minute and they're easily able to go through the fairly lackluster hull armor of the T-10. This thing may be fast, it may carry a good gun with decent view range, all of those attributes, but one thing that it doesn't really have is, should we say, heavy, heavy tank armor. So we see that the Liberté and the IS-3 they did a good job in holding on to that position. They probably could have taken a couple more defensive locations, but also well played to the enemy team to realize that they needed to push out. There's a little hero on the AMX 1390 on the enemy team who's actually managed to destroy a third of our team by themselves at the start of this battle. And I was very worried about trying to dig out the rest of the enemy team here when we're actually slightly outnumbered. But hopefully, not for long, this IS-3-2 pushing along the flank towards my tier 8 Polish medium tank. We put a round into the side of the turret with some nice lead, and that allows the CS-53 to finish them off. Real big swing of affairs there. Now that means that the southern flank is secure. The AMX 1390, who I think was probably going to try and push with the IS-3-2, is now no longer able to do that. And with the subsequent shot against the WZ-1 21 FT, which was provided view range wise by the UDES 16 on my team, that things are starting to look really good. So now in World of Tanks, you can hold your Alt key and actually see the hit points of the enemy vehicle. So you don't even have to guess who has what hit points. In this scenario, considering I have 440 alpha damage, unless the AMX 1390 had a single hit point and the WZ 121 had a single hit point, then that means that the 111G. I can still one-shot all of them, is what I'm trying to suggest. It's very important to know what situation you're getting yourself into. And that is, can you destroy the enemy with a single shot? Will you need two shots? That will allow you to prioritize the most important targets. And in this situation, it's also about not exposing my hull armor. As long as I only expose my turret here against the Tier 9 Chinese Tank Destroyer, which has a Tier 10 Tank Destroyer gun, I should be okay. And it's about just exposing my turret, baiting out the shell, and then you can tell once the ricochet has happened exactly where the enemy team is. But I didn't predict that! The WZ-121 gets a real good shot in. So even though the pings aren't working, 
I've actually pinged the map twice to tell my team where the different vehicles are. And then I've told the UDES-16 that I'm going to help them in that scenario and I'm aiming for where the WZ was spotted, which will mean that I can hopefully clutch shot the WZ very quickly. I knew pretty much exactly where he was, but oh dear, the shell went just over the tank. I didn't want to go too much up on the ridge line because otherwise, to all intents and purposes, the WZ-111 GFT was going to get me, but I have to take the risk here to finish off the tier 8 TD. And a good trade there. Thank you to the UDES-16 on our team, because we just traded one tank for two tanks. We've got now a two versus one situation, but I've still got to be careful. I don't want to drive up here because with 772 hit points, knowing that the WZ-111G has 750 alpha damage, I would, to all intents and purposes, four out of, four out of ten times die to a single shot. But I know the CS-53 could be able to reload, well, could take a hit and then be able to finish them off. And it also looked like the WZ-111 GFT was actually changing ammunition type. Because you notice how little damage they did to the CS-53. I guess they were trying to use HE to be able to splash me in my hold down position here in the T-10. What, what's that WZ thinking? You know, they've nerfed the HE, right? Well, really, in, in a tank like that, what, what else is he going to do to a hull down T-10 menace? And there you have it. In this game... In the T10, we were presented with a lot of pitfalls. We were going into a dungeon of World of Tanks. There were traps to the left, traps to the right. We managed to evade them all. We flanked on back to be able to deliver the, the crossfire to not walk into the enemy's trap and to be able to shut down the enemy's tank destroyers with some great plays holistically across our team in a, in a very close game of World of Tanks. So look, there's, there's so many different things that players do badly in World of Tanks. I can't tell you in a single video how to get good. What I wanted to do in this video is to explain that there's a reason why some players are dealing more damage, there's a reason why some players are winning more of their games, and that's because they are making better decisions. They are seeing those traps, they're seeing those pitfalls, and they're putting themselves in the best possible situation to be able to get through them. Now, all of that doesn't come in a single game. The reason why I was able to to see what to do here on Stajanki is because I've played hundreds of games in a tank like the T10. I've played probably, when I think about a thousand games in a vehicle like this, you know, your Soviet grindy vehicle, where I know that I've got a good turret. I know I can sit in a hold down position, knowledge of the different positions which I can use with five degrees of gun depression on a tank like this. I knew about the Conqueror's health. I knew about the, uh, the Carnarvon's decent DPM that would lead on into the Conqueror as well. There's a thousand different things that you can learn in World of Tanks to enable you to make better decisions. All of that just comes from experience. So don't stress, just play. But also while you're playing, definitely be a little bit critical about where you could have made a better decision that possibly would have swung the game in your team's favor. And that's what it's about. It's about becoming a better dungeoneer, you know, to avoid those traps. And of course, as it should be, navigating all of those traps and completing the dungeon should be rewarding. And it definitely was here in the T10. We get an ace tanker for our 1,567 base experience, a high caliber for the 6,580 damage that we dealt, and a confederate medal for damaging at least six opponents that were subsequently killed by our allies. And wow, talk about damaging opponents we actually damaged 13 out of 15 of them and so ladies and gents boys and girls that was it for today really hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up but if you hated it give it a thumbs down and if you're watching this video as it's released on saturday for one day only i'm going to be running the tech tree showcase not on a sunday it might have something to do with the little football match that might be happening tomorrow and so if you're watching this video as it is released live on Saturday. Come along live right now as I'm going to be showcasing the entirety of the Super Conqueror Tech Tree. And I can't believe this, but this is actually the first time I'm showcasing a British Tech Tree in the whole of 2021. What is happening this year? Oh my lord. And so come along as I experience the joys of the Churchills, the absolute pleasures of the Black Prince. <laughs> sounds wrong and then i guess i make up for it once i get to the real hull down monsters at tier 8 tier 9 and tier 10 and so i'm really looking forward to seeing all of you live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon